morning, and I'm on MIG this morning, getting ready to splice some three-strand rope in order to uh, hook up my lee cloth. I tend to splice three-strand a lot uh, for anchor purposes and little things around the boat. It's really not a difficult thing. Uh, there's not a real mystery to it after the first tuck is in. Um, and then I thought I'd discuss lee cloths because uh, some of you I know are not sailors and you don't go offshore and so you might not know what a lee cloth is. So I'm going to go ahead and discuss lee cloths. I also wanted to show you some of the homey things that I've done since I finished the cushions on uh, the forward cabin of MIG and I'm very happy with some of the other little things that I did that make it feel more like a home. As some of you might remember, I grew up in Wyoming and spent many years in Montana, and that area is my home in my heart. Uh, I can't ever live there again because it's not close enough to the ocean, and now the ocean, I, I have to live near the ocean, obviously. So uh, I wanted to bring everything on MIG, because she's such a small boat, Everything that I hang on the walls has a very specific meaning to me in my heart. Um, and I'm going to go, at some point, I'm going to go through when it's all finished. I'm going to go through each thing and, and just share with you the little stories behind each of the little hanging uh, pictures and whatnot on my boat. But today I wanted to share a little bit about my curtains and my lee cloth material and my pillow slip covers all of which I made myself with my Sailrite sewing machine this fabric was given to me by my mother and it used to hang in bedroom in her house that I used to stay in when I would come to visit and I always liked it it always kind of reminded me of my mother uh, it's very, it's very Western and Wyoming-ish, and definitely something that you, if you knew my mom, you would know. Oh yeah, that's something Marianne would love. And she gave me this material, and I repurposed it and turned it into uh, a covering for my lee cloth with three pockets, and my throw pillows. I made slip covers for all of my throw pillows, and I made the curtains. This is the material. These are the curtains. And they're very simple little curtains. They have paint stick stirrers in the bottom and the top right here so that I can roll them up. And why do you need curtains on a boat? Because when you get into the sun, you just want to block that sun a little bit. You just roll them up and then they'll just tie with, I'm gonna make a little green tie for each curtain from the same material as my cushions. So all of the ports now have these little curtains. And I made these slip covers. There's my blanket that she gave me as well, rolled up. Um, but I made these slip covers myself for these pillows. These were pillows that I had in the house that we weren't using. And you can get pillow forms from Sailrite and make your own without repurposing other pillows. But these pillowcases, little slip covers, have a little opening so that you can take the pillow out, remove it, and put it back in. And that was the first time I'd ever done that. So this one also has the same little deal. I did a little better job on that one, but they're very cool. And then this is a lee cloth. I'm getting ready to splice this three strand rope and I'll show you how to do that and then how the, three, how the lee cloth attaches up above. Here's a lee cloth. It, hold, it goes up like this and it holds you in your berth when you're offshore. Most 
Lee claws, people tend to make them very tall, like like way up here. Um, and you really don't need them that hot, that tall. The, the reason I like them a little shorter, mine is only about, oh, uh, comes, comes up about a foot and a half. <clears throat> and the reason I like that is because I like to be able to just jump right over the lee cloth without taking it down. I like leaving it up. And if it was very tall, especially in the small boat, I would have to crawl in and out through the front area right here. And I just wanna be able to just jump over it. Oh, and I finished my insert cushion right here. So that that's another little cool thing. And I just put it on here right now to show you that as well. So when I'm offshore, the lee cloth will be up. This area will be my berth and it'll never, I'll never put the bedding away and whatnot when I'm offshore, it'll just be, and there, there'll be a, a sheet that comes down over this and then here, and that'll be my berth. And then I'll leave this up and then underneath here, I will store my life raft and my ditch bag. Um, so I'm gonna take this down right now and then I'm gonna begin working on my lee cloth. But when I'm offshore, this will be up all the time, which makes it very easy to sit right here at the nav station on this side as well. See, I can sit right here with the lee cloth up and work at the nav station right here. And the other thing you can do offshore is you can sit right here facing forward with the lee cloth up and the berth here. You can sit right here facing forward on the boat, which is very comfortable offshore to face forward. And just, this is a great riding spot for offshore. I haven't done this yet, but I, I know from experience that this would be a great spot. So I'm going to show you that stuff right now. You can get this rope in um, synthetic, which is what this is, it's just nylon three strand, or you can get it in natural fibers made of hemp usually or something like that. Uh, the difference is this tends to be um, a little a little slipperier to use. Uh, the, the natural fibers you have to tuck in uh, three tucks and with this stuff you need to do they say five. Um, you know, strength wise, you can you can go online and you can you can test the you can see the different tests of different strengths of rope. Uh, the nylon, this nylon is very strong. Uh, it's for a lee cloth, so it, it just has to hold my body in and not come undone. So what I want to do with the lee cloth is I want to have a a hook to hook to my pad eye on the wall. Now these, to be honest with you, I have these this kind because for two reasons. <laughs> One, the main reason is they did not have in town, I couldn't find the kind I wanted. But these are actually better in some ways. These are very difficult to clip on uh, when it's tight and under, under load and you want your lee cloth tight. So in order to clip these on, I'll have to pull really hard I'll show you when I'm finished to clip them. Once they're clipped, however, they stay in place very, very good, and they'll hold my body. Uh, you know, even in a big, even in a big wave that crashes over to one side. I like the kind that are they're kind of a pinch, and then the end, the end of the uh, fitting opens up like this, because then under pressure you can you can just grab them and they'll come undone. Now, if, you're, if your lee cloth is very tall, you would want uh, that kind because it's very difficult for you to get out of your lee cloth uh, quickly. Uh, my lee cloth, I like them a little shorter so that I can just jump over them and I leave them up offshore. Once they're up, I leave my lee cloth up until I come into port. So I can struggle with the pull to hook them up. And so that's what I'm using this time. So what I'm going to do is on one end of this line, I'm going to splice this into it, just like that. So in the end, it'll look like this. 
and that'll be my clamp. Um, now, you need about, well, you need five tucks with this, so I'm gonna need enough. I can eyeball it pretty good. That, that should be plenty right there for five tucks. So what I do is I'm gonna first just tape this up right here where I want that to be. So I use, for splicing, I use this cloth tape. I don't use electrical tape. You can. It's, it's not like this is better than electrical tape. I just kind of like the use of this a little better. And I, I kind of like the cloth uh, feel. It's I don't know. I, I just like this better. No real reason for it. So now I'm going to tape this up right here, right around here to hold my splice where I want it to be. So the next part is to divide out your three strands. Okay, so there they are. And now I'm gonna put a little tape around each of those. These splices are used a lot for a lot of different things. I I use them, once I figured out how to do these three strand splices, I was a splicing maniac. Uh, I like to splice my uh, road right into my chain so that I don't have to worry about the chain, you know, coming undone um, from, the, from the road. And uh, it also goes over the gypsy of the windlass much easier if it's spliced through instead of a, you know, an eye with a thimble on it or something like that. Now the next thing that I do here, well, what you have to do is you unwind all this. And then I'll show you a little trick I use that helps me keep these in order. So I unwind them all. And then you just kind of want them to fall where they want to fall. So you just kind of shake it. And then you get an idea of, it looks like obviously this is my center and this is my left uh, facing you guys and this is my right facing you guys. So what I do is I put a green mark on the starboard side, <laughs> the right side just to keep an idea of which one is which. The middle one doesn't have anything except for the black tape. And uh, then port and starboard. Green, red. Uh-oh, Sharpie on my table. Oh no. All right, so now I have my three strands. So you take your center strand and you want to put it over the first one nearest it on top, which would be, we hold it like that and we look, it's the first nearest one is gonna be this one here. So we are gonna go over that and under the next one down. Now, if you had a FID and a Marlin spike, you could do this a little easier with, with uh, rope. Ropes come in soft, medium, and hard. Uh, and, and the hard ones, are you'll need a Marlin spike and a FID. So there's our center, that's our first tuck. And then you go to the left and every time, you notice I went over and under to the left. Every time you're gonna go over and under to the left. So this one we're gonna go, this is the one we went under, so we're gonna not do that one. We're going to go over that one. And under this one to the left with red. Now, this one, we're gonna go back 
And this one's a little weirder. You got to look because this is the tail. We don't want to use the tail. And this is the other tail. So the one that we want to go over and under is right here. So we're going to be going backwards to do that. If you look, I'm going to pull this one apart. And with the green one, they go through there. Boy, that little thing makes a lot of noise doing this. Okay, now if you did this right, you snug them down. And if you did it right, they should all fall off of one side each of that. Then you go back to your black and you will just go over and under all the way up. So I go over this one with the black and under that one. Then red was my next one. So I've got the red one and I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna go over this one and under the next one. Always going through and going to the left. Okay, and then we'll look at our green one right here and it's going to be over this one and under that one. Now you you kind of will want to accidentally do the actual tail one but you don't want to do that. So you go through that one. There we go. And I'm not going to show you the rest of this. I'll show you at the end what it looks like. But that is, that is what we're looking for right there. This nice splice. Uh, and now I'm just going to go over and under black, red, green, over and under until these are buried at the end. And then I will uh, cut them off and this splice will be done for this. And then I have to splice the other side to the Lee cloth. This is the end result of our splice. And if you notice, if you've done it right, all three come out at about perpendicular to each other. Uh, and you can see that, that, that it's done right. It looks right. If it looks lopsided, then it's wrong. <laughs> now, the other way that you can do this, um, if you don't like these tails coming out like this, is you can tuck one, cut it off, then tuck the next one up again in a line and cut it off, and then tuck the next one up and cut it off. And in the end, then, that looks like this. I kind of like that better. This, by the way, is a finished Lee cloth uh, line. I kind of like that. I'm not going to do it on this one though. And I didn't down here either. So the next thing I need to do is uh, splice my line to this. Now you notice there's no grommet on the outside. This is just a cover. The actual Lee cloth is this uh, canvas in here and it already had a grommet in it. So I can't put a new grommet through there. So it won't matter. There is a grommet underneath. So I'm going to just splice directly to it like I did this one. The grommet is what's actually holding that, um, not the cloth on the outside. So, so I'm not going to show you splicing this one either. I will just go ahead and do it right now and then I'll finish up uh, showing you the entire Lee cloth and how it works. So here I am. Here I am laying on my berth on MIG and I have my Lee cloth up. This is a Lee cloth and as you can see it just keeps you in the boat in the berth. There we go. So like I said you don't really need it super tall. It just needs to be tall enough that you know it keeps you from falling out of your berth. And with this one, 
I've got these great little pockets that I put in here. There's three of them, one here, one here, and one down here. I guess I'll store my Kindle in here, in this first pocket. And maybe in the middle pocket, I can put my little travel CPAP machine <laughs> when I'm not using it. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty comfortable little little spot. So here's here's the way I would usually be sleeping with this on the side right here. And as you can see, it just keeps me keeps me snugly in my in my berth. It's very comfortable. And there's no need for a great big huge one. I you know, in my opinion. Some people may disagree with me, and if you do, uh, just make your comments and let me know what you think. Do you like a tall Lee cloth, or do you like a smaller Lee cloth? Uh, everybody has their opinions that spends any time offshore, I suppose, or maybe you don't even think about it. But there's my Lee cloth. I'm captured by your charm, enchanted by your ways, in the magic